Hey, it's Yomi here and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do a video where I might be speaking about a little bit of bookish um, goals that I have and also like my favorite reads for 2020. Um, and yeah, just in case it's raining. When I wanted to film this, it wasn't raining, then there were a lot of noises, then I decided to stop, then I decided to start, and it's just raining. So just in case, we're just going to ignore all that and just, you know, have fun with it. Yeah. So as little bookish goals that I have, just because I haven't been aiming for huge goals within my life, I've found a different tactic for it, and it's one that I really do enjoy, especially, you know, a word focus is something that I have been taking into consideration a lot more in 2020, and, you know, I have continued it in 2021. I do want to read a total of 40 books. It's those books that I really, really want to read, and also tackle my bookshelves, because I really need to tackle that. I also discovered in 2020 that I really do like reading a lot more middle grade and also Latinx inspired books, and I think that was why I was in like a huge slump in my life. And once I discovered that, I was really enjoying the books that I read. Um, I had the privilege of getting chosen to be a rep for Owl Crate Junior, and this is where I discovered a lot of middle grades. And also, this is well, it wasn't the start of my passion for middle grade, but it's something that also sparked it and just continued, you know, in that journey. And also, Latinx inspired books is something that I have been craving for such a long time. And yeah, um, let's just get into the books that I have enjoyed for 2020. And the first ones that I'm going to start with are middle grade, just because those are the ones, like I said, that I read that I discovered in 2020, and those are the ones that I really want to speak about. So if I gush, <laughs> I apologize, but I thoroughly enjoyed all of these books, and I really want to talk more about them on my channel. So the first one that I'm going to be speaking about is Cinders and Sparrows by Stefan Bachman. I discovered that this is basically. Um, a teen author you know it's basically like a young adult author and i'm just like what freaking love it i love this book from beginning to end and this is one of those books that i had no idea about until actually you know it came into the bo in the box of valkyrie and i was just like this is so freaking amazing the premise alone just sounds interesting because here we have zeta and she does not know that she is a witch or that she comes from a long line of powerful witches until one day she receives this letter and she gets you know sent into um the castle that she's supposed to have inherited especially knowing that her family has sadly passed away so this is where she discovers that um maybe she knew that something deep down was wrong within her but it wasn't something that sparked a light until she starts to receive you know little clues throughout her journey in the castle and i really do love the characters that she befriends in the castle and also her journey within this castle and like the person that's supposed to take care of her <clears throat> Oh my goodness, I really, really dislike her. I also really did like the take on witches because here we don't have witches like in front of a cauldron and whatnot. It's just, you know, chanting spells and also the power that they have. And just, I really did enjoy the take that I had on witches and it wasn't something that was boring. It was something that glued me to the pages. It was a story about self-discovery. It is a story that, you know, it is about found family and it's one that glued me to the pages. Actually, the castle. The castle is so fascinating, especially the little secrets that it has and the mystery that's involved within the castle. And I think that everything was really well done. I would love more from this book. Like, I'm being real. This was really, really amazing. This was just unput downable because it just has that spark of, you know, you feeling like a little kid while reading it, but also enjoying the things that are happening because Zeta is such a head strong female character you know from the get-go she knows what she wants even though at times you see that it might falter she remains true to who she is and also the side characters that she discovers along the way are just simply fantastic and i actually fell in love with them so the revelations are ones that just had me like jaw dropping because like you know she is an orphan and then you're like wait why was it that she became an orphan especially you know she comes from a long line of witches especially powerful witches so that's something that was really interesting for you to discover as to why these events actually happen so it's a story that i really did enjoy and i highly highly recommend for people to read it this is great to read around the months of autumn towards um winter but it's just such a great darkish atmospheric read and it, for middle grade it's really amazing also just in case if you hear any background noises um it's still a little bit raining also um the nose is on 
because we really need to be paying attention to the news. But in the long line of mentioning books that are really both enjoyable for any age range, aside from Cinders and Sparrows, I'm going to be mentioning The Girl and the Ghost by Hannah Alcaf. This is another one that I received in Alcrate, and I have to admit this was such a hidden gem. I had no idea anything about this book, and I heard the audiobook while following, up, following along, just because I had a lot of things to do on that day. But this was just such a great story. Like, one of my favorite tropes is found family, so you're going to see that throughout um, a lot of the books that I might mention, but here we also have that trope of found family and also um, befriending people that you never knew um, that you would actually like speak to or, you know, just basically um, communicate because these supernatural beings are something that you don't know that they might exist. So yeah, I think that the narrator also did a fantastic job with this one, but if you don't know anything about the girl and the ghost, um, I can tell you something really, really quickly. Um, it's basically about our main character, she is named Suraya, but she comes from a low-class working family, um, especially her mother, because that's the only person that she has in her life. And you get to see the struggles and just, you know, living day to day, especially um, not living the best of life with your clothes as people like to you know stereotypically um tell you that you know you're supposed to be wearing this and this and this and obviously if you don't have money for that then you can't wear those nice things that you're supposed to be wearing you know so i really did like that take on it and you know those topics that were included within the book i thought that was just fascinating and one day um suraya discovers that you know a ghost has basically been I'm not gonna say it's Heather, but basically has been bonded to her and we get a lot of information I'm not gonna say because obviously it's spoilers as to why was it that this ghost got bonded to her But this is where her entire life just changes a little bit. She discovers a lot of things within her life She also discovers um, Jing, which is a person that she befriends and just you know them going on a little journey and discovering um, hidden secrets about their lives and also some that were really really fascinating and also um, Eventually having to escape the clutches of an evil entity. I thought that, that was really really interesting And also how is it that the ghost is sp specifically made in this one? Um, what was it that they were called? I keep on forgetting their name as to oh Pelicids, how is it that a pelicid is created? It's just like it was really really hurtful like this book brought tears to my eyes in maybe some senses of joy but also because i felt empathy for these characters these were characters that actually stood out from the book and i really did enjoy everything about it just in case you're not wondering um cinders and sparrows are five out of five and the girl and the ghost is five out of five um there are no harry potter references and a book that has no harry potter references i can tell you that i'm going to take my hat off to that book and just freaking love it and enjoy it so so much there were um references to the lord of the rings there were many 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 references to star wars and also their favorite book was a wrinkle in time so that was actually a breath of fresh air overall this was an amazing read and i highly highly recommend for people to read it the next book that i'm going to be speaking about is one that i really thoroughly enjoyed and i read it <laughs> Twice. That's how much I freaking loved it, and that is Ghost Squad by Claribel A. Ortega. This is such a great debut middle grade, and it's also going to be turned into a movie, so I'm, <laughs> I'm so freaking excited because this is taking inspiration from um, Ghostbusters and also the Goonies, so I think that those two things together were just freaking fantastic, but I really did enjoy this story. It was just so wonderful, it was atmospheric, and it was just so immersive that I freaking enjoyed everything about it. One thing that I will say that really um, kind of did sadden me a bit is that this is not pitched as a Latinx inspired and or own voices um, story, and it should be because that's exactly what it is. I remember mentioning it in... Um, my Instagram and the author actually um, um, commented that it is own voices so that alone just had me like you know over the moon that was just so amazing and our main character Luceli is from Dominican Republic and just the fact that she can see ghosts and that her family is just so wonderful and so beautiful and just so together the family dynamic is one thing that I really really did enjoy thoroughly throughout the book and also the characters that um, Luceli is friends with um, Babette was one that I thoroughly enjoyed so so much. Sid was another one that was, she was just so fantastic. Like these characters I rooted for so much and even though yeah um, one day Luceli decides to do a spell and unfortunately a few things backfire and she unleashes dark malevolent spirits that now she has to contain in order to save her town so this was really like also like scooby-doo-ish kind of that you know where they unleash um dark entities and they have to save the town in order you know 
for not everything to go into you know into a shit show but this was something that was just really really good it has the right amount of eeriness to it and it's a perfect read leading up to halloween because it has that um setting within it but i think that this was just such a well written story and one that you can actually sit down and just enjoy in one sitting because it's so action-packed that it's a page turner and you know it's a story that is beautiful executed perfectly and just the characters just pop out of the page and that's something that i always love to enjoy in middle grade stories we're gonna move into ya and also other sort of age ranges that i really don't know what they are but we're just gonna get into those the book that i'm gonna mention is one that i'm still to this day trying to discover where is it that I can actually buy it so I can actually have it within my hands because I really really need that book and that is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune that is one of my most favorite reads and one of the best discoveries that I had in 2020 it was such a beautiful heartwarming heart-wrenching <laughs> towards the end book that I discovered and it was just such a wonderful read that I was just like where have you been my entire life? Because why couldn't you have been written any sooner? How in Cerulean Sea was one that I freaking adored every single character. Because here we have Linus Baker and he is your, you know, day-to-day -day, um, kind of social worker that he's like, no, I'm going to be by the books. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to feel anything else. I'm just going to go to work, do my job, and then come home. It's basically a routine that he has fallen into until one day Daigami decides to tell him that he has to go into this orphanage and actually um, observe these most dangerous kids of the entire universe, you know, because they have been dubbed as one of the most dangerous um, children within our world so this is why the it's a uh, contemporary fantasy because it starts off as contemporary then we get these fantastical elements woven into the story so that's why it's contemporary fantasy which i think it was like the first contemporary fantasy that i've read and then i discovered you know that genre as a whole freaking fell in love with it but also once our um linus goes into um this orphanage he discovers arthur oh my god Oh, I freaking adore Arthur and also discovers these dangerous kids. We do have an Antichrist there, we have a gnome, we have a fairy, um, we have a blob, and these are all characters that I simply adore because every single one of them is so unique and so different and each one of them has a backstory that is at times tragic and you just can't help but sympathize with them and also, also, and also want to jump into the pages and actually hug them. I have to admit, Sal was one that I was just like, I literally cried for Sal's backstory because it was beautiful. Everything that author does for these kids is just so beautiful and how, you know, he is willing to go, you know, that extra mile that he's willing to go. So I think that overall, all of that was just fascinating, honestly. And just what happens in the end, oh my God, it was just such a beautiful story and I would love, love to get another book in the house of the ceremony and see because, you know, these characters were just so beautiful and it also has the, um, trope of found family which again is something that i really do enjoy and also the adorable and just amazing slow burn male on male romance i'm just sold honestly on everything that this book entails it's just beautiful amazing if you can't tell it was five out of five stars and i really really can't stop gushing about this book because it was just that good it was perfection it's a little bit difficult for me because i have to admit that both the House in the Cerulean Sea and the one that I'm going to be speaking about right now were some of my favorite discoveries of 2020 and up to this day I still don't know which is the first one so both of them are a tie for number one so these are books that I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed because they were just so amazing and each had something special within my heart and the one that I'm speaking about without even mentioning it is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas this was such a beautiful well-written story that just I resonated with on so many levels because I felt these characters grief I felt these characters pain and just everything that they went through and I have to admit that Javier's journey is one that I really enjoy because I understand his perspective especially coming from a Latinx family um, which some Latinos tend to be really old-fashioned so they don't want to change in this story in Cemetery Boys we follow Javier and he is a queer trans and he's longing for validation from his family because they don't want to accept who he is and who he has become even though his family might push him to the side and whatnot 
he still loves his family he still wants to prove that you know he's worthy of being a brujo and i have to admit that the brujo aspects on this story were really fascinating and i really did enjoy them i did enjoy that world building aspect of it and the fact that this is own voices and it's just filled with magic and adventure and just romance and just wonderful and just beautiful and just maritza oh my god i have to admit that i really really did love maritza just because she is the first hispanic vegan that i see in a book and i cannot i okay i'm gushing right now because it's just a, such an amazing treat to actually see a hispanic who's vegan portrayed within a book okay so let me talk about cemetery boys so cemetery boys is basically about um Jadriel. again he wants to do his quince and this is where he roughly steps into his powers and actually gets upset, accepted into being a brujo and one day um one of his cousins miguel um is killed so he decides to bring his spirit back in order to question and also see what is it that happens and also just lead him on his way into a prosperous well journey in the afterlife unfortunately awakens a ghost another ghost who is julian diaz and this is where everything happens that the story actually takes place because julian diaz is your bad boy and he doesn't go down quietly because he also wants to know why was it that he was murdered and what was it that went down so these two go on a journey to discover what is it that happened to julian diaz and here we also have other little things that happened along the way magic the the journey that they're thrusted in everything was really amazing and also they found family aspects especially for julian diaz um family isn't always the people that you are born into you can create your own family and that's something that i really really did enjoy in this book and just the writing the writing was simply beautiful and i was just drawn to the page five out of five stars highly recommend for everybody to read it because it is just that good it lives up to the expectation the next book that i'm going to be speaking about is a clap when you land by elizabeth acevedo i have to admit that i will read anything and anything that elizabeth acevedo decides to publish heck if she has her grocery list i would read that because honestly her writing is just impeccable and i freaking adore every single aspect of it this is another novel in verse that i thoroughly and i'm using the word thoroughly a lot i don't know why but we're gonna roll with it okay in clap when you land we follow two perspectives we have camino who lives in dominican republic and we have jahaira who lives in new york city and basically we get to discover how is it that their lives are intertwined it's a story that deals with grief it's a story that deals with the loss of a parent it's a strong hard-hitting emotional um story to read and it's one that i became really immersive in because i felt these girls and coming from a person that used to live in the states and then moved to puerto rico i understand both of their perspectives and i feel both of their um journey that they went through so you know what they dealt with felt real felt raw and i actually rooted for these two characters i would have to say that content warning for a lot of things um especially sexual assault there's stalking slash sort of lurking um i did mention the death of a parent um and also um incidents involving a plane crash because um this is where their journey starts and we actually discover um you know becoming a family and also the hardships that that has so i think that it was a well-written story it's something that really was beautiful because even though it has some tragic moments especially that ending oh my god there were some things that happened there that i was just like oh my god but these characters felt lifelike and the journey that they went in through is something that i can root for i'm not telling too too much just because i don't want to give anything away but i actually highly recommend for you to sit down and pick this one up because it was a really great read this book that i'm going to be speaking about is sadie by courtney summers this was a read that i was not expecting to enjoy i gave it five out of five stars i think that the audiobook did an amazing job just because it has a podcast feel to it so you generally really have to hear the audiobook and follow along i think that it's a story that was raw that was emotional and that was dark and that it hits you right in the soul this is basically sadie and she is on a journey to discover who is it that killed her sister and it's roughly a journey of revenge and i'm like speaking about it and i get goosebumps just because this story was really really uh, so difficult to read about because we don't get the actual pain that she went through the sexual assault that was happening because there is 
um, content warning in this book for a lot of things that we get throughout the story, especially after everything that is said. But there is pedophilia, um, we have sexual abuse, um, there is drug abuse, and there is murder. There's a lot of things that I should highly check, tell you to check before you actually decide to actually read this book. Um, but again, it's something that I really did enjoy about the author, the fact that um, she doesn't make focus on these specific things, but actually the toll that a person can go through having experienced that abuse. So I would have to say that that was amazingly done. And also the representation was another thing that I really, really did enjoy. But it's just a story that made me sad because of what happened. Honestly, just sit down and read it. This is raw, this is emotional, this is powerful. The last book that I'm going to be speaking of because my battery is flashing, so I'm gonna try and make this quick. Um, it's The Deepest Roots by Miranda Acevedo. I really did enjoy this book. This was a 4.5 out of five stars. I think that the one thing that really drew me into this story were the characters. I resonated with these characters. I felt their um, struggles and their obstacles that they were going through, especially I felt represented through Mercy and Rome. I didn't think this. I think that these two characters were really, really incredible to actually read about because, again, like I mentioned, I understood their struggles, I understood what was it that they were going through, and I think that Rome was a badass character even though she did rub me the wrong way, but, you know, she did also know when to shut up, so that's something that was nice. But I really also did love the side characters, and I also enjoyed the journey that these girls were thrusted into, and also the paranormal aspect that it has to it. I thought that those things made all together made a really great story and i'm really not telling you anything about the story per se i'm just telling you how much i enjoy these characters because i am a character driven reader so characters that feel like lifelike and just pop out of the pages for me are really really interesting really fascinating to write to read about so this is something that executed that perfectly and also their friendship and also how they discovered that maybe the secrets that they were keeping from one another were actually killing them from the inside so them discovering that and also trying to work together and stop what was happening i thought that that was all really really interesting and also like the aspect of the paranormal fact to it, I really did like the way that it has something to it, especially towards the town and every female within the town. So I think that all that was really well played out, but I really, really did enjoy this book. So yeah, those were all the books that I really did enjoy reading in 2020, and I would highly recommend every single one of them. So yeah, if you want to tell me which were the books that you enjoyed in 2020, then feel free and we'll chit chat down below. Um, what was my astro? I have no idea, but I will see you in my next video, hopefully soon. So take care and... Peace out.